Amy has a twin sister. They were born only a few minutes apart, covered in blood and screaming into this beautiful world. It had been a hard birth, one that had inflicted a great deal of pain to their mother, Julie. Her screams echoed in the sterile halls of the hospital as if some wounded animal was close to cold death. Doctors presiding over the birth were sure to the highest degree that she would die during the experience. A few of them were sure that Amy and her twin would die as well. When the heads came out first and the screams from their small mouths mixed and overlapped over Julie's, the world seemed to slow down. However, the screams from Julie stopped after they came out, replaced only by her labored breathing. The doctors were wrong. Amy and Anna lived past the birth. At first, during infancy, Amy and her twin were normal, happy babies. They cried like banshees and awoke Julie in the middle of the night, dissecting her dreams into the pieces of reality. Julie was annoyed with them, sure, but when she stared into their eyes, she felt her heart melt. Their eyes were full of a reflective pool of innocence so pure that the mere sight of it was enchanting. Amy and Anna were in sync the first few months of their lives, like other twins. Whenever Amy slept, Anna was asleep as well. And as her sister was crying, bawling over, Amy was also shrieking. They slept next to each other in their crib, ate the same mush called baby food, and wore the same small clothes as each other. The only difference was in the colors. Amy wore pink while her sister wore blue. Julie once said to her elderly mother, half jokingly and half serious, that it was like they had the same mind. The changes began when they were five years old. Their hair had grown down to their waists, a beautiful blonde color, and their blue eyes became deeper. They had thin, tiny frames that caused any dress they wore to be a few sizes too big. Their skin was the perfect tint, and dimples showed when they smiled. Julie believed that they were so much like her when she was a little girl herself. Yet, that was only true for Amy. Amy was bubbly and sweet. When she and Anna played with the other children, she was the one who was fair during the games of hide-and-seek. The rules were always on her mind, a code that she had to live by in precise detail. Amy never got into trouble with the other kids. There were no harsh words spoken by her towards the others. No pushing and hitting when in arguments. Amy only cared for others to be happy, even if it was at the cost of her own happiness. She shared ice cream with those whose own had fallen to the ground, soiled, giving up her own cold treat. She was the one who had always responded to a fellow child being hurt, calling his or her mother for help. Amy always brushed her teeth and cleaned her room and ate her food just like her mother told her to. She was an angel, you could say. Anna, however, Anna was different. There was something terribly wrong with Anna. Unlike her sister, Anna was silent and withdrawn from others, just staring at people with a blank face. She never played with the others that much. But when she did, she bit them. She bit them so hard that the teeth marks oozed blood. Despite their screams, Anna continued to bite them over and over again. She bit them even as they struggled to escape from her grasp. She continued to bite them, even as their mothers and fathers pulled them apart. Whenever Julie found herself having spit flung in her face by a maddened parent, she always whispered as low as possible to the enraged parent, I'm sorry, but she's an animal. Anna used to be allowed to go outside and mingle with the other kids, but that all changed when she was caught. Julie had been searching for her on that cold winter night frostbite clawing at her skin. Anna hadn't come inside with her sister when darkness broke the sky. And when asked as to where her sister was, Amy just pointed outside, not speaking a word. Julie had searched everywhere for her, the woods, the streets, everywhere. She was beginning to grow afraid when she caught in the corner of her eye the faint yet illuminating light that came from the backyard shed. The door had been slightly open, and it was just enough room for someone small to sneak into. Julie walked over to the shed, freezing and clutching the white gown to her body. 
The silence of night was broken by faint sounds that emitted from the shed. At first, she couldn't recognize them, but after a while, she could make out what seemed to be crunches, tearing and chewing. They grew louder and louder as she entered the shed, softly calling Anna's name into the space. She peeked in her head. She could see the tiny frame of Anna sitting in front of the door, hunched over something. She was chewing and ripping that something apart. Relieved at finding her missing daughter, Julie stepped into the shed and slowly made her way over to her. Anna didn't notice her name being called, not at first. However, as her mother got closer to her, she stopped chewing and turned her head around. Now, Julie could see what her daughter was eating. And when she saw it, she screamed and screamed and screamed. There was blood on Anna's smiling face, caking her small hands, her white dress littered with red stains. At her feet laid the chewed, half-eaten body of a squirrel, bites showing bone and red flesh. And Anna has never been seen since. She never bit any more children after that night, never comes outside with her sister to play. Julie refuses to let anyone near the basement door. She even refuses to acknowledge that Anna exists. She says that her daughter won't come out to play, will never leave her in Amy's room. No one can explain the sounds that come out of the basement at night, the hungry growls of an animal. Amy doesn't talk about her sister either. She says that she's an only child. Everyone just goes along with the lie because they are relieved that Anna won't bite any children ever again. However, everyone knows that Amy has a twin sister. <laughs>